Epilogue, The Burning Oni Pagoda. Ah. When I found her, she was lying on the roof, gazing up at the sky, a cup of wine raised to her lips. Ah, there you are. I had a feeling you'd be the only one showing up. Spare me your feigned surprise. This is exactly what you planned. Right. Sorry, sorry. I've had so much to drink, it's gone to my head a little. It seemed the alcoholic fumes were so thick that we were completely cut off from Kialda. So, since it was just the two of us, I decided that if I was ever going to ask her, it had to be now. There was another reason you made this tower, isn't there? Huh? If all you truly wanted was to ask me whether I was an Oni or not, you would never have made it so tall. That is much too complex an endeavor for such a simple goal. It may make sense in the abstract, but I cannot believe you ever pursued it in earnest. So of course I would expect that your true intentions lay elsewhere. Ah, uh, <laughs> you're thinking way too hard about this. I'm just an Oni who loves her drink. You can't expect me to go around taking everything seriously, sweetie. But if you really insist, I guess I might have thought it'd be fun to do something big for Setsuban. I really was trying to get you to admit to your true Oni nature by making this tower and having, bit of a f and having a bit of fun while I was at it. But it wouldn't have been much fun if you were the only one making your way up. So I thought if we make a big Setsubon festival out of it, we could all have more fun. I see. Does that have anything to do with the man you prevented from climbing? Oh, you're a lot sharper than you look. I am a general, after all. It is part of my job to keep a close eye on everyone's condition. But you're still wrong. This time around, if me and the brat faced off, we'd only end up killing each other. That's just how it worries. Yeah. I mean, that's fun in its own right, but I'm having so much more fun being Master's servant right now. So keeping him on the ground was basically me saying, we don't have to do this now, okay? I've no idea if that's how he took it, though. Back when I was just beginning to make my way up the tower, I thought it made sense to speak with the people who would understand what was happening there. And of course, he was one of those people. Reflecting on these conversations, I suspect he knew Shooten's true intentions. Of course he did. How strange. They were opposites in every way, predisposed to try and kill each other whenever they got the chance. And yet, this Oni and that human understand each other better than anyone else. Uh, I would argue if Kentoki is actually human. He was born from the thunderbolt of a god. <laughs> that does not sound human to me. Yes, I see now that their relationship is, in its own way, just as valid as any other debatable. Hey, while we're drinking together and all, tell me something else. Do you know anything about your ancestors? Any stories passed down or anything? I do not. Both my parents and my parent grandparents alike were shocked when I was born looking like this. Gotcha. Well then, I guess we, I guess all we can say for sure... is that one of your ancestors must have gotten real friendly with an Oni somewhere way back. I wonder what happened to them. Did the Oni just eat the human, or did they find a way to make it work? I cannot say. I... Nobody can see for certain whether humans and Oni were ever able to coexist peacefully. Yes, you're right. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. I really should know better than to ask dumb questions I already know the answer to. Just forget it. Oh, that's just great. Now I'm all out of my best wine. She stretched out dejectedly and got to her feet. 
For a fleeting moment, she seemed to put her usual carefree attitude aside and let herself just be herself. It was then that I had a thought, a wild, baseless, unfounded thought. I wondered if perhaps her true objective in building this tower might not have been those the last few moments we spent together. Up on that roof, she wouldn't have to worry about anyone else interrupting us or overhearing what we had to say. A safe haven for an Oni and the one invited to join her. Perhaps that was what she truly needed. A place where she could be herself and someone who would join her there. That way, no one else would ever learn about the question she asked. Or that she even cared enough to ask it in the first place. No, that couldn't be right. I must have simply been imagining things. Right. An Oni like her would never be interested in coexisting with humans after all. So what are you going to do about me anyway? For a while there, I thought you were going to cut off my head before I'd finished my drink. I will never be an ally to an Oni, but neither will I be your enemy or cut you down where you stand. Right now, I am Lauren Vaney Zanagi's servant, just as you are. You know, you still kind of disgust me, but since I lost the fight, I guess I don't really have a leg to stand on. Still, I should let you know, someday you're gonna have to pick a side, whether you want to or not. <laughs> I refuse to let this strong alcohol get the better of me. I must exterminate the pests while I still have good cause. Well, that's just great. Guess that overprotective cow isn't going to stop until she claws her way up here. Gotta say, I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> oh, hey, Baraki. Didn't know you were still here. I am. I was biding my time on the 19th floor's outer wall when the cow's bloodlust drove me up to the roof. We should have known Raiko would have eventually make her way here. So is it now a good time to end all this? I mean, we can kill her, or we can run away. But whichever it's gonna be, we need to do it now. You're right. You know it's been such a fun day that I'm exhausted. Let's get out of here. Understood. Hang on tight. Wait, you need to destroy this tower before you go. Oh, right. Don't worry, I already took out my magical energy core. All you gotta do is demolish the tower like normal, and it should disappear on its own. After that, go ahead and do whatever you want for all I care. Oh, you're here too, huh? You've got even bigger Oni horns now, and you're wielding fire just like I do. Hey, wait! You're pretending to be mad at me just to get candy from the green one, aren't you? How dare you? Never mind that. Let's just get out while the getting's good. Alright, if you say so, shootin'. You may be a fire Oni too, but don't forget that you'll never be on my level. I've got way more experience and awesome tales of my exploits. She better come pay your respects later. Well, see you around. Maybe we can share a drink together again if the opportunity presents itself. I doubt that. Let us just say that... Let's just say that have no tolerance. Let's just say that I have no tolerance for alcohol whatsoever. Phew. Now then. Lady Raiko, Master, if you can hear me, then know that I have driven the two Oni away. I will complete our mission by demolishing this tower, so everyone, please make your escape as soon as possible. Master and Lady Raiko responded swiftly, neither wasting any time in making the correct decision. But they no doubt needed time to complete their evacuation. There was no need for me to rush. I steadied my breath and slowly reached for my quiver. Hey shootin', I didn't really learn anything from all this. Not that I have any regrets, there's just something I want to ask you. Are, um, are you sure we aren't going to get in trouble when we go back to Kialda? What if it ends up being Mount Oe all over again? Well, the tower's time is already up anyway. They'll probably call it even if we say we're sorry and tell them we just did it to welcome the new girl. Especially since we didn't bother any ordinary humans this time. That's true. Since there were so many other good things to eat, I didn't take so much as a finger. Still, aren't you sad the tower you worked so hard to build is getting destroyed? What a waste. 
Oh no, it's fine. I figured it was going to end this way when I made it. That's why I called the tower the Oni Pagoda. One that was made by an Oni and meant to be burned down by one. Still, setting fire to a building so soaked in alcohol fumes is probably going to create a raging inferno. But they can't hold me responsible for that, right? As I narrowed my eyes and turned my gaze upward to the blazing sunset piercing the heavens, I could have sworn I heard a familiar voice whispering in my head. You certainly are a strong one, aren't you? I like that. I like that very much. Oni blood, what of it? You are... you are you, are you not? And that's when it hit me. Neither of them chose. Not my current master and not Lord Yoshinaka. So I shall do the same. I choose not to choose. I am neither Oni nor human. No, I am just... As I drew my bowstring, I thought about Oni and about humans. Peering down the tip of my arrow, I saw the midday sun laying beyond it. It may not have been the morning sun, but it still reminded me of him. Would my arrow reach it if I fired now? Who knew? What I did know is that, if I were to wish with all my heart that it would, that it would and it succeeded, his soul would surely be at peace. With that in mind, I chanted with all my heart. On our or Kaya Sawaka, whatever, MP attack go. No matter how I squinted my eyes, I could never look directly upon its light. All I could do was let loose my arrow, taking with it my love for him, knowing with certainty that my beloved lay in the direction it flew. However, I knew that, sadly, it would never reach him, no matter what. Which was why, of course, it came back to me. As its piercing glimmer drew near, I saw all manner of things. I was, in essence, dreaming. I dreamed of the long life I once lived, solitary and alone, of dying together on the battlefield, a fate that never came to pass. And of parting ways with the battlefield and living a long, long life, happy together. If only I could have lived out the rest of my days by his side. Would I have remained human if that had come to pass, or would I have eventually succumbed? In the end, that too was but a meaningless dream. I was me, and at that moment, in that place, no more, no less. As much as I still loved him, he was part of my past, and there he must remain. Indeed, even if I were to lay my hands on the omnipotent which granting, granter known as the Holy Grail, and could receive anything I asked for, I would not wish for anything at all. Up to that very moment, I had wished fervently for nothing more than for my beloved to rest in peace. That much was certain. I had wished as greedily as an oni, and as modestly as a human. Funny that. I didn't even have to think about it. I had always been an oni and a human. I leaped off the tiles and began to fall through the air. Soon after, the arrow I had loosed earlier came back down to pierce the spot where I had stood... And from there... Well, at least we get a cool CG out of that. Huh? Well now, I thought it'd be a fun change of pace to try drinking in the rec room, but look who's already here. It's nice to see you two getting along so well. Hi. Gaming Archer. Good timing. At this moment, I could use all the help I can get. Please, right this way. What are you up to? Are you plotting to ambush me? I've been waiting all this time for you to come and pay your respects, and now you invite me to... I only resort to violence when there is no alternative. Here, consider this in advance. This is... Azuki Bean Daifuku. It tastes just as sweet as I remember. As I told you, I could use all the help I can get. Now please, come here and take this controller. I am currently engaged in a three-on-three -three team battle against Lady Osakabinahi Osakabi Hime. I let the CPU fill in for our missing team member, but I see now that the more allies I have whom I can give orders freely, the greater my chances of victory. 
It is fortunate that Master happened to show up when he did, but I could still use another player. And why should I help you with that? Hand-eye coordination isn't really my strong suit. And Oni does not concern herself with her allies' placement in battle. Why else do you think I fought on Mount Oe all by myself? Ibaraki. I can't believe how much consideration she shows to those around her. That is too bad. I was planning to repay your kindness with more uh, Azuki Bean Daifuku, but... Yeah. Mwahaha! <laughs> Give me that controller. I will show you what an expert co-op match looks like. Just watching you play a bit is all it took for me to master this paltry game. Soon I shall wear the wail hear the wailing and lamentations of that Batwoman as she cowers in abject defeat. I swear, Ibaraki's sweet tooth will be her downfall. Oh well, guess it's better than getting kicked out since we are Oni and all. I don't understand either of these uh, either of these options because I'm not Japanese enough for this. I'm gonna go with the top one. Is that so? I can hardly imagine what sort of nut jobs would want to invite Oni into their homes. Oh well, I suppose I'll just cheer you all on from back here. <laughs> Wanna trade with me? No thanks, sweetie. I can't drink if I'm holding a controller with both hands, now can I? I'll just watch you all so my drink goes down easier. Make sure you put on a good show for me, okay, sweetie? Cause if you don't and I get bored, I might just start nibbling you. Starting with your ears. Good luck out there, Kay. If you're gonna invite this many Oni into your home, you better be ready to handle us all the way to the end. And that was Satsuban. Story-wise, um, I've pretty much said my piece on that one. I feel like this story would have been better handled if maybe Tomoe was a welfare or something. As it stands now, it's an interesting event, but it focuses heavily on a character whose name they don't even give because she appeared in one of the Epic of Remnants. So, in essence, they really expect you to already know who this character is, since they never say her name. And if you'd never played that, if you, if you never played fucking, um, uh, what the fuck was the Epic of Remnants she was in? Shinjuku, Argatha, Salem. The fuck's the third one? It's literally on the tip of my tongue. I keep wanting to say Satsubon. That's not right. Great Battlefield, Sashi. What the fuck's it called? A anyways, the point is, if you didn't play that one and didn't get even the tiniest bit of information about her, or if you didn't recruit her, period, this means very little in the long run. In the long run, it's focusing on a character I don't have, and therefore it's just, eh. It's okay, but it's not great by any means, I guess. I don't know. It's weird. Mechanically wise, though, this event is a giant, is a big fat liar. The game, the, uh, the event itself touted itself as being a great challenge for expert players. Yeah, that was total horseshit. Most of the levels were incredibly fucking easy as long as you had leveled up servants. The only challenge was going against what FGO basically lets you do already and leveling up all of your servants. Like, I had no problem thanks to series like What You've Missed basically pushing me to max ascend all of my servants. And that's literally all the challenge is if you had enough servants to actually go through it. Which, in my mind, isn't really a challenge. I mean, it's a challenge because... I don't know. It's kind of like... The game basically reinforces you don't have to level up everyone. You don't need to use every character. You can just pretty much go through most of the game using the same group of characters over and over again. In a sense, that's kind of a challenge that they make you use every character. But the same argument be could be said that it's a challenge to try and breathe underwater. You don't have to do it, but it sure is a challenge if you try. <laughs> it's like, you don't have to normally do it, but if you try, yeah, it might be difficult. But yeah, having maxed out servants, it was a fucking breeze. 
I was honestly really bored with it, if I'm gonna be real. That being said though, it was better than our next event, which was Valentine's 2020, the Bountiful Chocolate Gardens of Valentine. Oh boy.